Hey guys, Brock here. I'm back with another removal video. Um, so first things first, uh, there are potential spoilers in this video. So if you do not want to be spoiled for the last episode of Game of Thrones, do not watch this. Um, I've done my best to try to alleviate some of those spoilers. Um, but if you're watching this video, you've probably already seen the episode anyway. Uh, came out last night, and uh, you know, if you care that much about it, you've probably already watched it. So, anyway, without further ado, let's just get right on into it. So, right now, you can see we've got a bunch of anonymous citizens sitting around in circle. I'm gonna just let this play a couple times and I want you to look closely. Do you see what we're gonna be removing? It's there, but if you blink you'll miss it. I bet you missed it. Alright, so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video, pull it all the way back, and I'm just gonna let it sit there. Do you see it? You see it now? Right here. That is a plastic water bottle in Westeros. Um, so obviously uh, someone was drinking water on set, thought that they had hid the bottle behind their leg. They had not. And again, just like with the coffee cup, it made it through production and post-production and no one caught it but of course as soon as it was online as soon as people could watch it it was seen so let's go ahead and get rid of that and let's see what we can do um, to alleviate this situation I'm gonna go ahead and close this video and get right on into After Effects so I've got this project already set up here um, I've got our footage I've um, shorten the timeline down to only the frames where it's visible so um, you know we've got about 23 frames here that's at 30 frames per second the show probably runs at 24 frames per second so some of these frames might even be repeated um, at 24 frames per second it's probably less frames but anyway let's go ahead and get into it so we've got our plate we're gonna go ahead and add mocha and I use this shortcut um, plugin that came from Video Copilot. Go ahead and check those guys out. Andrew Kramer is uh, a great resource. I've uh, looked at many of his videos over the years and learned quite a few things from him. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get into Mocha. Uh, you could use Mocha AE that comes with After Effects. I'm gonna use Mocha Pro because that's my preferred version. We're gonna go right in here and um, we're just going to zoom in okay so you can see the water bottle right here I want to scrub through it's a good idea to always look at your footage okay so you can see even though I um, limited the timeline we've got all the frames here so I'm gonna go to frame 23 you can see that's where it starts to um, get covered up so I'm gonna pull this back here Let's go an extra frame and come back to this first frame. First thing I want to do is track this area. So um, luckily this foot does not move very much and this chair leg also doesn't move very much. So I'm going to do a very rough roto. And we're just going to do a quick track. And that's going to come in handy um, when I actually go in and uh, get a proper roto. We're going to use that track to help us out. Now you want to be careful and stop the track before it gets covered because when this covers it up it's going to start to affect the track. So probably go one more frame and let's see I'm not actually tracking I'm just going to preview one more frame you see it's starting to cover it up. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to draw a second mask, and I'm going to actually kind of follow this shape here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but with that mask in front, I'm going to right-click on one of the points, 
and I'm gonna say layer, subtract layer. Now what that's gonna do is since this layer is above the foot, um, it is going to subtract anything below it. And so it will not affect the shape of this one. Um, this guy is going to track everything except for where it touches this mask. Okay, so um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and manually track this guy. So I'm going to turn this tracking layer off. And I've already got a keyframe here. So let's go uh, one frame forward. Um, actually, before I do that, let me turn the tracking off on layer one. So I want to get this subtract layer in place before I continue tracking this one. So with this guy selected, let's go. Now I turn tracking off, so I, I'm not tracking. I'm just going forward one frame. Then I'm gonna grab all the points. So I'm doing control A to grab all of the points. And I'm just gonna pull it here. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just looking for the middle ground between the edge of the fuzz and the, the um, opaque of the shape. Then we're going to go another frame and do the same thing. Another frame. Another frame. And actually that's frame 24, so that's the end right there. So let's back up. And I'll just go ahead and keyframe one more here. And that's all I need to worry about for this guy. So let's go ahead and lock layer two. And we're gonna turn tracking back on for layer one. So for layer one, we stopped tracking on 20. You can see the blue area here is where you've already tracked and the red area is not tracked. And we're gonna go one frame forward. You can see the shape did not get affected when this overlapped it. So you can go to this um, mode here, which will show you. So this is what it's tracking. But when this mask overlaps it, it is not tracking this corner anymore. Then we'll go one more frame forward. Same thing. And then one more frame forward. Okay. And so that is frame 23. Let's see if we can get one more frame. And that'll bring us to 24. And you see it looks like frame 23 and 24 are the same frame. Uh, remember. I was saying earlier, the show shot at 23,976, so 24 frames per second, um, but this clip is actually 30 frames, so some of the frames are doubled. Um, and it makes sense that it would be doubled right here because uh, 24 frames equals one second if it's running 24 frames per second, and so after that second, it doubled the footage. But um, we've got our rough track here. Now I can turn off this mask. I can turn off tracking and I can lock this guy. And I'm actually going to turn off this uh, layer mat mode. So I'm just going to click on that so that I have the outline again. Okay. Now we're going to do our proper roto. And like I said, it looks like that boot does not move, which is great. So I'm just going to go back to frame zero. And we are going to roto this boot. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so I can see a little bit better. Now, if I were getting paid to do this, I would spend a lot of time on it. But just for the sake of expediency, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. But you'll get the idea. Okay. Can I go ahead and finish this guy out? Don't have to worry about the back of the boot too much, just where the water bottle is. Okay, and right click to finish. Now I like to grab all of my points and give it a little bit of a curve so that they're not sharp. And then I sharpen out my corners. And you can double check to see that all looks fine. Okay, so now here's the trick. So layer one, I'm gonna rename it. This is our track. Right. Instead of tracking this one again, we're going to link layer three to the track. And we rename that to boot. Okay, so now I can lock boot. And when we scrub through, it should follow because we've already tracked it. See that? 
only had to rotoscope one frame, and because I had my tracker ready, it's following it. Okay, so um, that is pretty much all we need to do in Mocha. Uh, let me save it, Control S. And there's a couple things I want to do here. So I want to select the track, and I want to go to Show Planar Surface. And just like the last video, I want to expand this larger than I need because I'm going to get a corner pin from this. Uh, let's see, somewhere right here. Now another trick I like to do is line up these um, sides with straight lines in the footage as often as possible just because it helps blend um, the replacement footage with the actual footage. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up right there and I can probably pull this guy over here somewhere. Just so that it kind of blends in. And this is way more than I need, so I can pull this to here. And probably into the boot, something like that. All right, so now export tracking data, we want the corner pin. So After Effects corner pin data uh, supports Mocha import because I'm going to use Mocha import, which is a plugin that you have to buy separately. So copy that to clipboard. And again, we'll save Control S. You can also go to File, Save Project, or when you close this, it'll ask you if you want to save it if you haven't already. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, duplicate my plate. And let me get rid of the mocha effect on this one. And I'm going to name this, hmm, what should we name this? Let's say uh, P1. I, I named it P1 for plate one. Uh, you'll figure out why in a minute. So P1 uh, bottle. And now that I've got that, I want to go into Mocha import. We want to do Mocha Pro. Load from clipboard, and we're going to actually load. It's going to take a moment. Okay. And then we want stabilize pre comp. Make sure you've got this layer selected and hit apply. I like to use power pin. So now it should look like nothing happened, but if we solo this layer, you can see it has actually stabilized a pre-comp in the area of our corner pin. So before I go any further, I'm gonna go back into our tracked plate, back into Mocha. I'm gonna grab the boot layer, export, uh, sorry, export shape data, Mocha shape data for AE, Copy the clipboard, and just lock that, save again. And now we want to put a solid, yes. So there's a few things you can do. I'm gonna put a solid here. You could also just repeat the plate. And if you repeated the plate, you would um, just overlay that on top. But since I'm doing a solid, I'm gonna use it as a uh, mask. Okay, so now that I've got this selected, I've got Mocha data on my clipboard. I'm gonna go to Edit, Paste Mocha Mask. That pastes it as an After Effects mask. And you can see this black solid is what I just put. So what I want to do, I'm gonna hide this layer so that you can see. I want this layer to only show up where the boot does not exist. So. Um, the column that I need is not visible, so I'm going to right click here and I'm going to go to uh, keys. No, not keys. Sorry. Um, modes. And I want to go to this guy, do an alpha inverted mat. So 
that will make this layer only show up where this does not exist. So if I turn on my transparency, you can see it only exists where the boot does not exist. And I accidentally moved my layer, so I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo. Now we can turn the plate back on and it looks like nothing has happened, that's fine. So we're gonna go into our stabilized pre-comp, zoom out so that we can kind of see what's going on. See this water bottle right here? Now if we preview this, it should look like nothing's moving. Now there's grain in the shot, so things are kind of shifting a little bit, but that's fine. For the most part, it's pretty stable, okay? So now, it's uh, basically a paint job to get rid of this water bottle. And since I rotoed the boot earlier, I don't have to be too careful uh, as far as preserving the edge of this boot because um, the roto of the boot is gonna uh, compensate for that. So we want to open this as a layer. Let's see if I can remember. It is, yep, I remembered it this time. So you hold Alt and you double click and that will open it as a layer. And now we can do our paint. So let's very quickly, oh, press the wrong button there. I'll hold Alt. And we're just going to paint that. So hold Alt to sample. And then we're just gonna paint that away. I didn't like that last one, so I'm gonna hit Control Z. And something like that. Sample right here. And I'm just gonna go a little bit farther than I need to because I don't need to worry about the edge of the boot. Okay and double check that your clones go for the entire duration, and they do. And in fact, this one, we only need to go to frame 23, 24, um, and it does. So let's go back into comp one. The bottle is gone. Let's preview that. And that bottle is very much gone. So you can see very quickly, we can remove that bottle. Now, one thing that you do want to notice is there is no feather currently on this, so it's got a very sharp edge. If we want to fix that, we just come in here and press F for feather. That's going to open the mask feather. I'm going to give it like a four pixel feather and maybe do a mask expansion of negative one or negative two. And so that kind of feathers that edge there. And let's preview that. And the last thing we want to do is add some motion blur. And that bottle is gone. So let's go ahead and zoom out so we can look at it. Let's say fit. Do you see a bottle? Because I don't see a bottle. All right, I knew that one was going to be pretty quick. So I actually have a second part I'm just saving here. I'm going to go ahead and open comp two. Oh, where is it here? Right there. This is actually a different water bottle um, that was on set. And this one was harder to spot, but you can tell the plastic ribbing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one. Let's go ahead and preview this shot. This shot is much longer, but it is very much static. It's what we would call a locked off shot. The camera doesn't move at all. And so for this one, I'm not even gonna track it. I'm just gonna go in and paint it. Nothing moves, the legs don't move, the camera doesn't move, the ground doesn't move. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna hold Alt, double click. That's gonna open this. Oh, should open it as a layer. Let's try that again, Alt and double click. Well, let's see. There we go. I don't know why I didn't do that time, but anyway, so we've got this layer opened up. Let's zoom in. And I'm just gonna go ahead and 
Now, um, just like last time, I should probably roto this before I paint it. So I'm gonna go back to this comp, right? Zoom in here. And we're gonna roto just the area we need. So before I do that, I'm gonna duplicate this. So I've got two of the plates. They're exactly the same. So if I turn one off, nothing happens. It's exactly the same, it's just the plate. And I'm going to rotoscope this area right here. That way I can be messy with my paint. Something like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to rename this one as uh, Rotoscoped, I guess. So if you press Enter, you can rename it. Let's call it Rotoed. Open that guy as a layer. I don't know why it's doing that. There we go. Okay. So you can see it's only showing this section because that's what's rotoscoped. I'm gonna go into my mask and lock it, that way I don't accidentally select it. And now we can paint. Um, I'm actually going to turn off the mask and then I'll do my paint. Okay, because otherwise sometimes um, it doesn't want to select outside of the masked area. So I'm going to take my diameter for my brush and kind of bring it down. Maybe that's too much. All right. And this is a very nondescript floor, so I can sample from pretty much anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and sample from out here. Or actually, this is more sh shaded, so this is under a chair, which is match this. So I'm going to go ahead and sample from here. notice I'm not being very careful at all so let's go back that was just one paint stroke by the way go back into this comp and uh, so this so this one is rotoscoped um, but actually I want the opposite so what I'm going to do is pull this to the bottom so now this is just the plate with nothing applied to it and that's why the bottle came back and take this mask and copy it, and I'm gonna paste it to this guy, right? So I have the mask here, it's turned off. Let's go ahead and turn that mask on as a subtract, okay? So what that is doing is subtracting the area that is masked out. So if I turn on my transparency, you can see there's just a hole here. And since this layer, which is actually not rotoed, it's painted, since this layer is painted, it will show through. Now the reason why I want this layer on top is because I did a bad job of painting. And this is going to make up for that. So again, like on the last one, I'm going to hit F. I'm going to feather this about four. And you see there's, there's some bleed here. So I want to go ahead and adjust my expansion as well. And that looks pretty good. So let's preview it. And since I'm sampling from the footage, I don't have to worry about noise. It's going to copy the noise from one area to another. Um, a lot of times when I'm working on shots like this, I will work on static with static image replacement, and then I have to generate noise to fix that. But in this case, since I'm sampling from the footage itself, the noise should be exactly the same because it came from the shot. And you see that's pretty much it. Let me zoom out. Uh, again, zoom to fit. And that water bottle is gone. So you can see very quickly this uh, entire video that I've been recording is about 20 minutes. Um, I removed two water bottles. So on average that's 10 a piece and that's even considering I was showing you step by step how it was done. If I didn't have to sh explain it, it would have been faster. So um, I know the showrunners and all the people working on Game of Thrones are 
really upset that they missed these things because they're quick and simple fixes. It's just that no one noticed it. But anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Um, if you want to see more of this type of stuff, let me know. Um, this is exactly the type of thing that I do as a freelance VFX artist on various productions. It's you know, not glamorous. Most people won't notice it if you did your job right, but uh, it is a necessary thing, especially with the type of movies that are made nowadays. There's so much VFX and there's so much that, you know, either gets missed on the day or you just can't do in real life. And this is the type of work that, you know, people like myself and others do, and it doesn't get noticed. You know, not everyone's making dragons. Some of us are just removing water bottles. Anyway, talk to you guys later.